Well, hello again. I hope everybody's doing okay as we ease into the end of the year. This is the next to last set of notes that we're going to be doing. Next week will be the final one. And of course, the chapter we've been working on for a while now, which is basically chapter 12 in your book, deals with circles. So we've already done a lot of work in this chapter dealing with arcs and angles. One thing that we figured out is that a central angle, an angle where the vertex is right at the center of the circle, it always has the same measure as the arc that it intercepts. So like in this picture, arc PR is going to be 90 degrees. The other thing that we've learned is that an inscribed angle, an angle where the vertex is right on the circle, that always measures half the intercepted arc. So since PR is 90, angle Q would end up being 45. This week we're going to learn some more stuff about arcs and angles, and in particular we're going to figure out what happens when I've got stuff that intersects inside or outside of a circle instead of right on it. So the first rule is what happens when you have lines or chords of a circle that are going to intersect inside the circle. And it turns out that the angle that they form is half the sum of the intercepted arcs. If I look at that picture, in this case, the angle we're trying to find, I could figure it out by adding up how long PE is and how long GR is. If I add those up and I take half of that, that's going to give me how big the angle is can sometimes help people to realize that where those chords intersect, it almost looks like a plus sign. So I've got to add those up, and then I take half of it to figure out how big the angle is. And of course, when you get to the quiz this week, one of the things you're going to have to do is find angles like that. So here, we got to figure out what's x. And to do that, what I'm going to do is add up 32 plus 54 and then take half of that. And you could either add them up and divide by 2, or like I did on the screen with 0.5 times that quantity. Either way, you're going to end up getting 43 degrees. So take a second and see if you can figure out how big x is in this picture. And we'd add up 170 and 70, that makes 240, divide that in 2, and our answer is 120 degrees. This one's asking us to find two different answers, x and y. Again, see if you can figure that out looking at the picture, finding out what you got. there's actually a couple of ways you could do this. You notice I've got the answers are x is 71 and y is 109. One way you could find x would be to take 85 plus 57. That gives you 142. If you divide by 2, you're going to get 71. And honestly, once you know that, the easiest way to find y is just realize those two angles make a line, so subtract from 180. You could also add up 70 plus 148, that would be 218, and then if you divide that by 2, you get 109 also. So yeah, either of those ways works to get your final answers. This problem's slightly different. This time I know I have a 75 degree angle, and the x is one of the arcs that's forming it. I've got x, and then on the other side we've got 40 that make that. Again, look at this for a minute, see if you can figure out how big would x have to be. Well, the important thing this time is that I could find 75 degrees by adding up x and 40 and then dividing by 2. So x plus 40 over 2 equals 75. Basically, I cross multiply. I multiply by 2, and I get x plus 40 is 150. That's why the answer's got to be 110 degrees. And so again, anytime you've got chords intersecting inside a circle, you can always figure out the angle by adding up the intercepted arcs 
and dividing by 2. Half the sum. The other rule that involves angles and arcs says that the measure of an angle of lines that intersect outside a circle is half the difference of the intercepted arcs. So here, where I've got two secants, they intersect outside the circle, what I would have to do is subtract the two arcs and then divide by two. Sometimes people will ask the question, what order do I subtract in? And basically it's just big minus small is all you do to figure out what you do. So inside you add them up and divide by two, outside you subtract and divide by two. And so see if you can figure out what we're gonna get for how big angle A is here. And again, the key thing is it's half the difference. I subtract 164 minus 70, and I could either do that and then divide by two, or I can just do 0.5 times the subtraction. You're gonna get 47 degrees. Here, our arcs are 115 and 25, so see if you can figure out how big angle X is gonna have to be. Well, if you subtract 115 minus 25, you get 90. Half of 90 is 45, and that's our answer. This one's the same thing, but it's a little bit more complicated problem because they're asking you to find x and then figure out how big both of the arcs are. So you might want to pause the video and see if you can work out this one. And again, the key to the whole thing is I've got to take half the difference. So 1 half, and then I subtract 5x plus 10 minus 3x plus 4. If I work all that out, it's got to give me the angle, which is 30. I got rid of that half by just multiplying both sides by 2. So 5x plus 10 minus 3x plus 4 equals 60. And basically here I'm combining like terms. I took 5x minus 3x and I got 2x. 10 minus 4 is 6. So 2x plus 6 is 60. You subtract 6. 2x would be 54. Divide by 2 and x is going to be 27. Once I know that x is 27, I've got to go back and figure out how big the arcs are. So I just plug those into the expressions. 5 times 27 plus 10 means the big arc is going to be 145. And 3 times 27 plus 4 gives me that the small arc is 85. So 145 and 85 are the two arcs. And again, the thing you want to remember is that when lines intersect outside a circle, you can find the angle by subtracting the arcs and then taking half of that. So there's one more thing we need to learn this week, and it's what's called the intersection of chords theorem. It says when two chords intersect, the product of the segments of one chord equals the product of the segments of the other. Product means you multiply. And so we're basically saying if I take the two parts of one chord, that's going to end up equaling what I get when I multiply the two parts of the other chord. So in this picture, A times B equals C times D. You multiply the two parts, and it's got to be the same in any two chords that intersect. So our problem here says solve for A. And again, we've got things that are labeled 6, 3, 9, and A. And the big thing is you've got to always multiply what's on the same chord. So here, 6 times A equals 3 times 9. 6A equals 27. If you divide, A's got to be 4 and a half, 4.5. And again, let's see if you can figure out this one. The picture is definitely not drawn right, but let's see if you could figure out what would X have to be in this problem. And again, it's always multiplying, so 2x equals 32. 
x has got to be 16. Now the way they drew this picture, it looks like those chords intersect at the center of the circle, and there's no way that could possibly happen. But yeah, it is going to end up being 16 for the x that we would have. Here it says find the value of x and then the length of each chord, and in the picture we've got 6, 8, x, and 5 written down. You can tell I just found this online, and that's why we've got somebody else's handwriting on here. But you would indeed have 8x equals 30, 6 times 5. You divide by 8, x is going to be 3.75. And then the length of each chord just means how what's the grand total of each of those chords. So like if you take 8 plus 3.75, you get 11.25, and if you take 6 plus 5, you get 11. So AB is 11, and CD would be 11.75. So basically three rules that we got this week. Again, when you've got chords that intersect inside a circle, you add and divide by 2 to figure out what the angle is. When stuff intersects outside the circle, you subtract and divide by 2 to figure out the angle. And when you've got chords intersecting inside a circle, you can multiply the segments of one, and it equals what you get when you multiply the segments of the other. So that is the next to last notes that we have. Again, we'll have one more set of stuff next week. The final part of the school year, the last couple of days, is officially designated for people to make up missing work. And so we will not have anything new the very last week of school. So one more set of notes, and then we're out of here. Take care, good luck with this week's, and we will talk to you again.